Let me ask you uh, uh, sort of a, a big question about preference. What would you say is the best programming language? Your favorite, but also the best. You've seen throughout your career, you're considered by many to be the greatest programmer ever. I mean, it's so difficult to place that label on anyone, if, but if you put it on anyone, it's you. So let me ask you these kind of ridiculous questions of what's the best band of all time, but in your case, what's the best programming language? Everything has all the caveats about it, but so what I use, so nowadays uh, I do program a reasonable amount of Python for AI, ML sorts of work. Uh, that's I'm not a, a native Python programmer. It's something I came to very late in my career. I understand what it's good for. But you don't um, dream in Python. I do not. And it has some of those things where there's some amazing stats when you say, if you just start if you make a loop, you know, a triply nested loop and start doing operations in Python, you can be thousands to potentially a million times slower than a proper GPU tensor operation. And these are staggering numbers. You know, yes. you can be as much slower as we've almost gotten faster in our, uh, you know, our pace of progress and all this other miraculous stuff. So your intuitions about inefficiencies within the Python sort of... It keeps hitting me upside the face yeah. where it just, it's gotten to the point now I understand. It's like, okay, you just can't do a loop if you care about performance in Python. You have to figure out how you can reformat this into some big vector operation or something that's going to be done completely within a C++ library. But the other hand is it's it's amazingly convenient and you just see stuff that people are able to cobble together by you just import a few different things and you can do stuff that nobody on earth could do 10 years ago and you can do it in a little cookbook thing that you copy pasted out of a website. So that is really great. When I'm sitting down to do what I consider kind of serious programming, it's still in C++, and it's really kind of a C-flavored C++ at that, where I'm not big into the modern uh, template metaprogramming sorts of things. I see a lot of train wrecks coming from some of that over-abstraction. Uh, I spent a few years really going kind of deep into the kind of the historical Lisp work um, and the Haskell and some of the functional programming sides of things, and there's... There is a lot of value there in the way you think about things, and I changed a lot of the way I write my C and C++ code based on what I learned about uh, the value that comes out of not having this random mutable state that you kind of lose track of, because something that many people don't really appreciate till they've been at it for a long time is that it's not the writing of the program initially, it's the whole lifespan of the program. And that's when it's not necessarily just how fast you wrote it or how, how fast it operates, but it's how can it bend and adapt as situations change. And then the thing that I've really been learning in my time at Meta with uh, the Oculus and VR work is it's also how well it hands off between a continuous kind of revolving door of programmers taking over maintenance and different things and how you get people up to speed in different areas. And there's all these other different aspects of it. So is C++ a good language for handover between engineers? Probably not the best. Uh, and there's some really interesting aspects to this where in some cases, languages that are not um, that are not generally thought well of for many reasons, like C is derided pretty broadly. That yes, obviously all of these security flaws that happen with the memory and uh, unsafeness and, uh, and buffer overruns and the things that you've got there, but there is this underappreciated aspect to the language is so simple anyone can go and you know if you know C you can generally jump in someplace and not have to learn what paradigms they're using because there just aren't that many available. Yeah. I think there's, you know, and there's some really, really well-written C code. Like it's, I find it great that if I'm messing around with something in OpenBSD, say, I mean, I can be walking around in the kernel and I'm like, I understand everything that's going on here. Uh, it's not hard for me to figure out what's, uh, you know, what I need to do to, to, you know, make whatever change that I need to. While you can have, you know, more significant languages like it's a downside of Lisp, where I don't regret the time that I spent with Lisp. I, I think that it, I, it did help, you know, help my thinking about programming in some ways. Yes. But the people that are the biggest defenders of Lisp are saying how malleable of a language it is. That if you write a huge Lisp program, you've basically invented your own kind of language and structure because it's not the primitives of the language you're using very much. It's all of the things you've built on top of that. And then a language like Racket, kind of one of the more modern Lisp versions, it's essentially touted as a language for building other languages. And 
I understand the value of that for a tiny little project, but the idea of that for one of these long term supported by lots of people kind of horrifies me, where all of those abstractions that you're like, okay, you can't touch this code till you educate yourself on all of these things that we've built on top of that. And it was interesting to see how uh, when Google made Go, a lot of the criticisms of that are, it's like, wow, this is not a state-of-the-art language. This language is just so simple and almost crude. And you could see the programming language people just looking down at it. But it does seem to be quite popular as basically saying, this is the good things about C. Everybody can just jump right in and use it. You don't need to restructure your brain to write good code in it. So uh, I wish that I had more opportunity for doing some work in Go. Uh, Rust is the other modern language that everybody talks about that I'm not fit to pass judgment on. I've done you know a little bit beyond Hello World. I wrote some like video decompression work in Rust just as an exercise, but that was a few years ago and I haven't really used it since. You know, the best programming language is the one that works generally that you're currently using because that's another trap is in almost every case I've seen when people mixed languages on a project, that's a mistake. I would rather stay just in one language so that everybody can work across the entire thing. And we have, like at Meta, we have a lot of projects that use kind of React frameworks. So you've got JavaScript here, and then you have uh, C++ for real work, and then you may have Java interfacing with some other part of the Android system. And those are all kind of horrible things. And that was, you know, one thing that I I remember talking with uh, with Boz at Facebook about it, where like, man, I wish we could have just said, we're only hiring C++ programmers. I am, and he just thought from the from the Facebook meta perspective, well, we just wouldn't be able to find enough. I, you know, with the thousands of programmers they've got there, it is not necessarily a dying breed, but you can sure find a lot more Java or JavaScript programmers. And I, I kind of mentioned that to Elon one time, and he was kind of flabbergasted about that. It's like, well, you just, you go out and you find those programmers and you don't hire the other programmers that don't do the languages that you want to use. But right now, I guess, yeah, they're using JavaScript on a bunch of the, the SpaceX work for the UI side of things. When you go find UI programmers, they're JavaScript programmers. I wonder if that's because there's a lot of JavaScript programmers, because I, I do think that great programmers are rare, that it's not, you know, if you just look at statistics of how many people are using different programming languages, that doesn't tell you the story of what the great programmers yeah. are using. And so you have to really look at what you were speaking to, which is the fundamentals of a language. What does it encourage you? How does it encourage you to think? What kind of systems does it encourage you to build? There is something about C++ that has elements of creativity, but forces you to be an adult <laughs> about your programming. Well, which it is, expects you to be an adult. <laughs> it does not adult. force you to. And so, a, so it brings out people that are willing to be creative in terms of building large systems and coming up with interesting solutions, but at the same time have the sort of the good software engineering practices that uh, amend themselves to real world systems. 